Hi, and welcome in this second uh, video series on web forms where we're going to focus on validating uh, the user's input data uh, in the web form. The objective essentially for this second video, uh, video series is to learn how to validate a web form input uh, with JavaScript. Now, I would highly recommend, uh, as a precondition to fully understand those uh, these video lectures, to have uh, that you have already followed the Code Academy JavaScript at uh, this following uh, URL. It's gonna really uh, be helpful for uh, fully understanding uh, the videos and the examples and the assignments in this uh, video series. Now, in this particular video, I'm gonna explain the process of form handling conceptually and technically. And that entails essentially explaining what events are. So events is a, is an important term, a keyword that we're going to keep on using in this uh, video series and this particular video. Before I do that, I would like to go through the typical workflow. So everything starts when the user submits the form after obviously having inserted some data. Then we as developers, we take over and we validate that data. Uh, in the browser, in the code that we're going to write within that web page with uh, JavaScript. Then essentially uh, the browser sends the data to the server and then as a developer we need to revalidate data for security purposes with uh, uh, PHP or uh, uh, any other server-side scripting language supported uh, by the web server and then we can as developers utilize the data, for example, you uh, store it in the database. So essentially, there are two ways of handling forms and validating the data, the client side and the server side. In the client side, knowledge of JavaScript is enough. No internet connection is required since JavaScript uh, code is embedded within uh, the HTML page. And the form data could temporarily be stored on the browser, for example, uh, on a cookie. Whereas on the server side, it requires an internet connection, it requires server space and knowledge of an uh, other scripting language, for example, PHP. And usually uh, we use a database to store and retrieve uh, the form data. On this particular uh, video series, we're going to focus on the client side where JavaScript uh, is enough. So some technical jargon, when the user submits the form, essentially what happens is uh, an event is triggered. So event and triggering of an event are two keywords, two terms that we're going to use, we're going to continuously use in these videos. And then what uh, we're going to do is we're going to assign essentially data and variables and check uh, data with conditional statements with JavaScript. So this is generally speaking the typical uh, workflow. Now, more practically, example of events are uh, on load, on click, on submit, and there are many of those. And practically, these are attributes of tags. So here you see in an example of an on load event. But practically, on load is an attribute within the body tag. And its value here is uh, something like this, which looks like this, which is uh, a, a JavaScript function. So an on something attribute would mean that <laughs> this is an event. So whenever you see an on something, so on load, on click, on submit, uh, whenever you read HTML code and you see on something, then that means that it's an event. Now you can find more on events uh, uh, following these two uh, URLs. Now, let me explain a little bit more events. So events are essentially triggered by user or system action. So for example, when a button is clicked, then probably we need to do something, uh, probably give a feedback message to the, the user or uh, take the data and submit it to the server. Something needs to be done. So this is uh, called uh, an event. So when a button, for example, is clicked, the on-click event is triggered. So these are the this is the verb that we're going to use. Or when a form is submitted, the on-submit event is triggered. Or for example, when a text box gets focused, the on-focus event is triggered. 
or when the web when a web page uh, has finished loading the onload event is triggered and the value of the attribute is some javascript code so for example in the body here we have the body tag and here we have the onload attribute which is an event which triggers when the uh, page has finished loading and here we're going to actually have as a value as its value we're going to have some javascript uh, code now the reason we, we use javascript is that we we can do things after a page has loaded on the browser so essentially we have uh, pre-programmed interactions with the user which run in the user's browser so for example we could uh, help them to correctly fill out a web form that's what we mean by validating the data and providing feedback yeah, in case of a, of a user's uh, of an error that the user uh, commits so in that way we essentially create a dynamic experience for our users and that's why we use javascript and javascript uh, practically speaking is the value of uh, <coughs> the uh, attributes of event attributes such as on load on submit on click and, and so forth and so on but let's see a very specific example which uh, is uh, hopefully is going to clarify the whole concept of events triggering of events in javascript and the use case that we're going to focus is when the web page has finished loading essentially we're going to use the on load event we want to present the user with a message so i'm gonna shift to my web editor and in order to use the onload event well we need to go to the body tag and when well, we hit space we can start and we start typing then we see that uh, there is this attribute which is the onload event and here in order to present the user with a message remember we are essentially now writing some javascript and in order to present the user with a message we need to use the javascript function alert so here uh, we need to use uh, we need then to have uh, two uh, single quotes and here we can write our message to the user so web page has now finished loading so i'm gonna save this file and move to the web browser and when i refresh this page you can see here that there is this javascript message with the text that i inserted web page has now finished loading so if i would change here uh, the text and i would have uh, something else i would save the page and refresh it you will see that this text appears right here Now, it is good practice to actually not write, so I'm, I'm going to change this back to the more meaningful message that I had, web page has now finished loading. Uh, and as I said, you know, here, the value of uh, the event attribute is essentially uh, the, uh, the JavaScript uh, piece of code. Now it is good practice not to insert uh, JavaScript codes uh, uh, commands, JavaScript commands uh, within the attributes, but it's good practice to actually create a function and encapsulate and enclose that uh, JavaScript command within that function. So this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to cut uh, this command and uh, specify a javascript function which i'm going to mention which i'm going to name do on load in order to actually create the function i need to use this uh, script tag be, which must be between the head tags and here now i can specify what happens in that 
JavaScript function. So the only thing that I need to make sure is that uh, this and this is the same name. <coughs> and here I'm going to paste essentially the command that uh, I had previously here as code. So essentially what I did is I, uh, you could think of it as uh, transporting the, the code that I had here uh, as a value of the attribute within that function. So if I would save the file and would refresh the web page, you can see that I get the same result. Now, why do I do that? Is because here, you know, I can insert uh, many other. Uh, so we use uh, functions to insert uh, several several commands. Right, so we can, uh, so in that sense, you know, we can save space and maintain the code uh, in a much better way. Now, it's also good practice for a function to always return something. And since uh, there's uh, nothing specific that we want this function to return, we're going to uh, issue the command return false. So if I'm going to do a final check where I'm going to save the file and refresh. And again, we see that it's, this is the same result. So in order to uh, get a full grasp of, of functions, JavaScript functions, the events, and the uh, alert command that we use right here, I would, as I said in the beginning of the video, video I highly recommend that you follow uh, the Code Academy track on JavaScript. Now this URL is going to give you also some information about what JavaScript functions are. And, and then you can also practice a bit on how to uh, specify a JavaScript function. Now, uh, I usually include assignments in my videos. So <clears throat> the assignment for you is uh, when a button is clicked. So essentially, you need to use the on click event. So when a button is clicked, I would like you to present the user with a message. Now, to create a button, uh, you can refer to my previous uh, video series. But as a tip, uh, I'm going to uh, mention that you need to use the input tag. So try to uh, provide the user with a message when the user essentially clicks a button. And this uh, concludes uh, this video. In the next video, we're actually uh, going to do something more interesting with JavaScript than just provide users with a simple message. So when a button is clicked, we will change its text and color of text. But uh, that we're going to cover in the following video.